Hi viewers, welcome to this video this morning. We are told to solve the equation 6 cos squared theta minus sine theta minus 4 equals to 0 in the range of uh, 0 degrees less than theta less than or equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's get started here. Yeah. have our solution. We are told that we have 6 cos square of theta minus sine of theta minus 4 so equals to 0. This is a type of quadratic equation in the form of a trigonometric function. So we need to register in our minds that cosine of square of theta can be written in the form of 1 minus sine square of theta. That's the beginning of this problem. And then we can somehow let a sine theta equals to m. Okay. So in our main equation here, we can just write 6 into bracket 1 minus sine square of theta into bracket then sine of theta minus 4 equals to 0. Okay. Um, this is the same as 6 minus 6 sine square of theta minus sine theta minus 4 equals to 0. But now we say sine theta equals to m. So we have 6 minus 6m squared minus m minus 4 equals to 0. So rearranging, we have uh, minus 6m squared minus m uh, plus 2 equals to 0, which is the same as uh, 6m squared um, plus m minus 2 equals to 0. So this is a quadratic equation that we need to solve. So I'm going to use factor method here. We have uh, 6m squared plus 4m minus 3m minus 2 equals to 0. And so we factor the quadratic equation and the first part gives us uh, 2m into 3m plus 2 minus 1 into 3m plus 2 equals to 0. So we have 2m. We have 2m here minus 1 and 3m plus 2 into bracket equals to 0. So we have either uh, 2m equals to 1 implying that m equals to a half and the other one is 3m plus 2 equals to 0 implying that m is equals to negative 2 thirds okay now we have to go back where we say let sine of theta be equal to m and now we determine what that angle is okay so uh, we can say that uh, sine of theta is equals to a half and we have to be careful because the range says uh, between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Well, we understand that sine of theta is equal to a half and so the inverse, sine inverse of that, will give us uh, the first angle as 30 degrees and that is found in the first quadrant. So if you go to the second quadrant, you take 180 minus 30, you have 150 degrees and those two angles are enough as far as this range is concerned, right? So we go to the second part here which says that uh, sine of theta is equal to negative two-thirds. But unfortunately, sine is positive in the first and second quadrant, and so this one seems to be in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant, respectively. So what we're going to do is to disregard this as per this particular range here. So the only two angles you can have are 30 degrees and 150 degrees, because if we were to determine the angle uh, resulting from this, we would get an angle uh, outside which uh, sign is not positive, right? And we need where the sign is positive. Uh, in other words, I mean, we need where the sign of under certain angle is negative to that, but we need to stick to the range because these two angles we are likely to get, or more angles we are likely to get, are going to be found uh, beyond the first and the second quadrant where sign is positive. Uh, so we, we can we can actually uh, think about it that way because uh, the range is also restricting us. Okay, so that's it. Right. Second question here. We have a question coming from calculus, and we are told to integrate three um, x squared minus two x plus three from one to three with respect to x. Okay. It's very simple this one we are going to approach it this way so we integrate uh, the function with respect to x 
we're going to have um, 3x squared integrating from 1 to 3 of 3x squared plus, minus 2x plus 3 with respect to x, okay? So, uh, when you integrate this entire function term by term, you're going to have x cubed minus x squared plus 3x, and we evaluate from 1 to 3. Substituting this gives me, uh, we have, you know, 3 cubed, oops, 3 cubed minus 3 squared plus 3 into 3. That's when you substitute the upper limit minus, substitute the lower limit, we have 1 cubed minus 1 square uh, plus 3 into 1, okay? So that's what you have. And so this one gives me uh, 27 minus 9 plus 9 minus, we have 1 minus 1 plus 3. And so this gives me 27 minus 3, which is 24. And that checks, right? It's not difficult. You just need to remember how to integrate a, a polynomial or a function, right? Okay. Next question here. Coming from the topic of transformations. This is transformation. Um, we are told that in a transformation, an object of area 64 centimeters square is mapped onto image whose area is 32 centimeters square. Given that the matrix of transformation is x plus 4, x to 1, those are the elements of a matrix of transformation, find the value of x. And you're given three marks there, okay? So what we know is that um, if you have a matrix M of transformation, the determinant of that matrix M is equal to area scale factor. That's very important. Okay, so we have to get the matrix M that we are given. And we determine, we also evaluate the determinant of this matrix. So determinant of M, or to take the main diagonal minus the minor diagonal, that gives me X plus 4 times 1 okay minus 2x so evaluating this uh, gives me minus x plus 4 okay so that is the determinant of that matrix uh, we need to also get the area scale factor which is the area of the image over area of the object and you need to be careful because now here we are told that in a transformation an object of area 64 so this is the area of the object and um, is mapped onto image whose area is 32. So don't confuse that and take otherwise. So we have um, determinant is equal to area scale factor. So we got to write x plus 4 is equals to our area scale factor, which is 32 out of 64. And this is quite trivial. We have minus x plus 4 equals to a half. Solving for x, we have. Um, minus x equals to minus 3 and a half. So x is equals to 3 and a half. And that's the answer. So uh, this topic of transformation, you need to remember this fact here, that determinant of a matrix of transformation is equals to the area scale factor, where a case, uh, the object is mapped onto an in image by a certain matrix of transformation. So you determine the determinant of that matrix actually, and then you equate it to the area scale factor, which in this case is 32 out of 64, which is a half. And eventually you get to solve that linear equation that is formed when you equate the two. And that's how it's done. Thank you.